Okay. So, I'm uh, gonna show you a quick video on, hopefully, hopefully quick video, on how to install Prusa Slicer on your lab computers. So, first and foremost, just for, search for Prusa Slicer, and uh, a slicing program is the program that takes the object, either an STL or a 3MF, and slices it into little pieces that the 3D printer can use. So, we're gonna open up Prusa Slicer, and just gonna download the Windows Slicer standalone. And then we're gonna install it pretty much with its default, uh, default settings. So when it's done, go ahead and run it, either from the bottom or the corner. You can close out, there we go, click next. Now, if you try to do it for everybody, for all users, it's gonna fail on your computer because you don't have that capability. So just install for me and click next you know, for you. And just go ahead and click next with all the defaults. Don't need to do anything else. Just click next and install. So again, a slicer takes the STL or the 3MF file that you made in a design program like Tinkercad or Fusion 360. And you input settings for your specific machine in this case, the Ender 3 V2, and you say base, and it says, oh, based on the machine, these are the settings that I'm gonna have to make, and the instructions I have to tell that machine to do to make that object. All right, so now we've got our Prusa slicer here, and we are installed and ready to go. Now, when you do install it and run it, it's gonna look like this. It might ask you to update, um, don't update. So just disable the automatic updates. We don't need to. Um, and it might all, oh yeah, I already have settings in here, but what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to go into configuration and go to configuration wizard. Configuration wizard. And do I wanna install this? This will probably not, yeah, that's not gonna show up because that, uh, that's, I'm updating a new version. So anyway, so this is a configuration wizard. This is the part where we tell Prusa Slicer what our machine is. And what our machine is, is a Creality Ender 3 V2 with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So you do your configuration wizard, choose Creality, and then Creality Ender 3 V2. If you've seen the machines, they look like this. So click that, leave all the rest of them unchecked, and then click finish. Couldn't be simpler. And then we're going to choose the printer we want, which is the Creality over here. See the printer right? we went over here? Uh, the Creality Ender 3 V2. There is our print surface. There we go. And for the filament, we're going to choose generic PLA. PLA stands for polylactic acid. It's a bioplastic that you'll be using. It is the easiest to use and just it's a great, great plastic. Now up here is the print settings. So you have super high detail, Ugh, good luck. Um, and then down here you have super draft. The print settings are always a multiple of the size of your nozzle. So if your nozzle is 0 0.04 millimeters, which it is, then you can print with a laying down filament in any multiple of that. Generally, we're gonna, most of the time, we're gonna print at 0.2 millimeters, which is five times the nozzle length, uh, and, or, or optimal, which is 0.6, okay? So these are the settings we're gonna use. Infill is how much of a solid box gets filled with actual plastic and how much is a gap. Um, 15 to 20% is usually what we're gonna use. Okay, so this is our basic settings. Now, we can go into an object and we can bring down an object and you print, you slice by basically just dragging an object into your uh, into your your print area. Okay, so there's the STL, and that's what's going to look like. And if we just go ahead and hit slice, it's going to use all the generic settings. I'll show you those settings in a second, and it slices it like so. So right now it is sliced into 31 layers, and each of those layers is 0.2 millimeters thick, because of our settings. So you can see what it's gonna do. If you wanna see what the actual uh, tool head is gonna do, it's gonna start here, it's gonna build a box, it's gonna fill that box up, and then it's gonna build the next layer. 
it's going to build, it's going to go over the box again, and so on. It's going to keep doing that, and it's going to build and build. When it gets to an empty section, then it's going to say, oh, I have infill. So I set to infill 15%, so it's going to create a structural grid rather than filling it entirely with plastic. Otherwise, we would be here forever. Okay, so it's done with its infill, then it's going to finish the box. All right, so that's the basic setting. Now, if you up here, you're going to have some more advanced settings. If you go to print settings, there's a bunch of things you can change, um, which you can look into if you want. I don't recommend you change them unless we have to. Probably the most important uh, are, well, actually, honest, yeah, we don't really need to change much. Okay, this is the most important. On filament settings, what it's going to do is it's going to heat up the machine. The bed is the where the plastic is going to be put down, and the nozzle is the thing that's actually putting the plastic down. You're going to heat it up to 210 degrees Celsius, which allows the, the uh, plastic to become very, very liquidy and go down very easily. And the bed, you're going to get to 60 Celsius. Okay? And, uh, and basically what, what that does is that allows the plastic to melt and stay fairly viscous. Um, and then the bed at a higher temperature, the plastic will stick to it. If you try to put down PLA on a cold bed, there's a good chance it won't stick. So these are pretty much the only things we'd ever change depending on the materials we're using, but it's, it's a pretty good setup, okay? The other setting that you might want to explore is infill. So when you do infill, you can do what's called ironing. Ironing takes a, the nozzle and it just kind of allows the plastic to just fall into the gaps and it goes over it and it, like, like an iron when you're ironing a shirt, the hot nozzle goes over the plastic and smooths it out. So you can enable ironing if you want. Do realize that increases the amount of print time dramatically, but it's only on the upper surfaces. The other things are support materials. If you try to generate an image or an object that has nowhere for it to print, so if you're trying to basically imagine you're, you're printing a dog head and you want to print the head, but there's nothing between the, pl the plate and the, the head, you're going to create what's called a, a, uh, a support structure, which is basically a lattice of grids that go up that can be thrown away afterwards. So I don't have an example for you right here, but you can also hit auto generate supports and I'll have a separate video on generating supports. And there's also videos that are online uh, by, by a bunch of guys that have done showing how to paint supports. But that's basically it. So now you got your object, you're gonna export. You're gonna export your, your G code, which is gonna be a file. It's gonna look like a text file. That G code, you're gonna put it on a mini SD, actually a micro SD, and the micro SD, you will then take to the printer and plug in, okay? Now some data here. Um, this tells you the length of filament, not that important. Again, length. Used filament in grams. And filaments we buy in spools of one kilogram. So this is how much it's gonna use. Cost, ignore that. That's just based on how much your filament costs, not important. This is what is important. So the estimated printing time, three hours, 38 minutes. Understand that when you print in class, you will start your print in class and you will pick it up the next day, okay? If it fails, then you're gonna to have to do it again. So hopefully when you print, you're always gonna look at the first layer. You're gonna puppy dog guard your print until it has completed the first two layers. So it's gonna put down a layer then it's going to put down the next layer. If the first two layers go down okay, your print will probably succeed. If your first two layers do not go down okay, if the print head isn't misaligned or the, if the print bed isn't leveled, then, then you're probably not going to work out. But if your first two prints work great, you're probably, your first two layers work great, you're probably going to be great. All right, so hopefully you watched this video. Hopefully you learned a lot. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm going to put this on Canvas pretty soon. Bye-bye.